Hi everybody, Yael here and on the 26th of October I'll be doing my walk with Walking Landscapes here in Aarhus, Denmark. I'm here today to explain to you a few simple meditation techniques and also a few Puto walk techniques We'll be talking about three aspects of the meditation walk or the Bhutto walk that we'll be doing. So one is the mind, the other is the body, and the third thing is the Bhutto, so the performative side of the walk. So what do we do with our mind when we practice this kind of walking meditation? The basic thing that we're trying to do is just keep our mind present in the here and now. Sometimes that's easier said than done because our mind does have the tendency to wander off, to think about other things, to run away. It's very important not to get frustrated about this. Remember that it's normal and the only thing that we can do, like a mother with a child, gently bring it back. So every time our mind runs away, very gently with a lot of compassion to yourself, bring it back. We have a few things that help us to anchor our mind to the moment. For example, you can connect to your body, so connect to sensation. You can connect to the feeling of the ground underneath your feet, to how you're shifting your weight with every step that you take. You can also connect to the sound around you, whether it's birds or cars or somebody walking by. All of these things help us to keep our mind in the moment, just connecting to your senses. Another way of anchoring our focus to the moment is to work with a mantra. So a mantra is some sort of words that we repeat in our mind constantly in a loop. A mantra can be anything. It can be something that is meaningful for you. It can also be something that is not meaningful for you. A mantra becomes a mantra when my focus on it is 100%. So I can walk and repeat to myself Coca-Cola, 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 Coca-Cola. If I am 100% concentrated on these words, then it becomes a mantra. It simply helps my mind stay in the here and now, focused. So you can choose whatever mantra you would like Again, something that is meaningful for you or just anything that you wish to work with. Another way of connecting to the moment is through our breath. So trying to pay attention to our breath and trying to breathe very deeply and slowly. Try to breathe all the way down to your lower stomach, to the very lowest part of your stomach and try to breathe as slow as you can while you still keep it comfortable. You could breathe relaxed through the nose, breathing in through the nose all the way down to your lower stomach and then breathing out through your nose all the way out. Breathing in and breathing out. If you like, you can imagine as if you have a small balloon in the lower part of your stomach and you just visualize this small balloon slowly expanding when you breathe in and then when as you breathe out slowly this balloon becomes smaller and shrinks. Expands when you breathe in and shrinks when you breathe out. You can imagine as if the movement of this ball or this balloon is like, like a wave. So there is no real beginning and ending to the breath. It's just a wave that continues back and forth. One more thing that you can do with your breath, and this is a very powerful tool, and that is to make your breath out twice as long as your breath in. So you can count your breath. For example, if I breathe in on four, I breathe out on eight. What is important is to make sure that you don't choke so that it's always comfortable. The breath out is always comfortable. So for example, if when I breathe out on eight, I find that it's uncomfortable, that I'm starting to choke, all I need to do is to breathe in quicker. So I breathe in, for example, on three, breathe out on six. It's up to you, you can find the tempo that is comfortable for you and also the tempo can change slightly as you do it. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the body. 
What we do in this walking meditation is basically we try to walk very, very slow. We're going to walk around 6 kilometers over 12 hours. So it's a very slow walk. But as you're walking, try to keep a feeling of flow. So even though you're walking very slow, try to feel as if something is moving all the time. You're not stopping. There's a continuous movement forward, even though it's very, very slow. Sometimes when we walk slowly, we can get tension in our body. We can get tension in the back of our neck, in our lower back, between the shoulder blades. It differs from person to person where our weak spots are. Something that can help if this happens is imagine as if your whole body is full of air. You can imagine your skeleton and then think as if you have air in all the joints, so between the bones. It's thinking as if our skeleton is just floating. All the bones are floating one on top of each other. Sometimes working with this image can help to release and relax the body as we're doing this slow walk. Bhutto, the Bhutto side of the walk that we're doing. Bhutto is a modern dance style that evolved in Japan in the late 50s. Some people say that it exists in the space between life and death. When we perform in Bhutto, we imagine that we're not just performing for the audience that is sitting in the seats, but also for the spirits of our ancestors that have come to watch the performance. This walk that we're doing on the 26th, we're imagining as if we are walking together with the spirit of our ancestors. Every hour on the hour I will ring a bell and I will do some sort of ritual or dance to welcome the spirits of the dead that are coming to walk with us or coming to watch us in our walk. For you, if you're joining, as you walk you can just keep this image in mind. Imagine as if you can feel these spirits walking with you, walking around you, supporting you on the way. Another technique that we can use in the Bhutto walk is the way we use our eyes. So try to think as if you're not looking at things, but you're looking through things, as if you're kind of a ghost, as if you are also existing in the space between life and death everything that you look at, you look through it, not at it. This technique of working with our eyes can actually affect our mindset and it can help us feel not attached to our environment so that we keep a, str a strong center and a focus in ourselves. Everything is happening around us but it doesn't steal our mind. Our mind stays in our center. I hope that these instructions can help you on the 26th if you would like to join the walk. You are very welcome to join either physically here in Aarhus or from wherever you are in the world. Just put on the live stream and walk with us wherever you are. It can also be in your living room or in your kitchen or in the park or wherever. Thank you very much and hope to see you on the 26th.